Well, we are going to be taking earlier there. Yeah, and now we're jumping into the first game of the wild card stage. It's going to be KBG going up against S2G. An interesting skirmish already at the start of the game. I'm definitely going to be putting my eyes onto the emblems first here. And this going to be the war cry, by the way, for Siggy Bun. And for the other side, LMU Impure Rage. We've been seeing a whole lot more Impure Rage nowadays, by the way. And it does seem like it's a... It's kind of a swap here, so it's actually Soxa on the Nolan. What are your thoughts on this? You, you've you seen Soxa before, back when he was an SMG. So I feel like Soxa is using the tankier junglers just because it's the meta, right? You kind of have to adapt to it. But Soxa is still pretty good on those assassins. And we look here, Tracy is trying to slow down S2G and try to actually make it so that Soxa is able to farm up much faster going up against the Frederick. And now, Karo is low and LMU goes in, he wants Karo. No, well, flickers forward, Soxa's still gonna be able to steal away that green camp, and it'll be a little bit of an early invade for KBG, getting them in the lead and utilizing that clear speed of the Nolan, even in the bottom lane. Wawa actually winning out against Ziggy Bum here, and that's not really a good look yeah, for the Roger. This is a winning matchup for the Roger, and it does seem like for KBG, they want to continue with this pace. Already invading again, trying to go for the steal, and I think he did get it. It's a two-man Jeet Kune Do, and with that range, the additional speed, Soxa. Jumps into the back line, doesn't have the fracture, but we'll be able to chase Begin straight up first blood in the enemy jungle. Yeah, and now this is where Keep Best Gaming are gonna start the DD snowball. Siggy Bum, I feel like he's having a hard time trying to proc the war cry. Like he has full proc there, but he's not going for it for the trade. Oh, okay, he pulls back and KBG continue again. That's two kills on the board up against the group A favorites. America, we talked about it. The more we say about one team, the opposite will happen. And, and we're seeing a showcase here. Keep Best Gaming having two kills over S2G, and now they have Pryo on the turtle. Looks like they're gonna get it for free. So now in terms of the goal lead, they're gonna snowball a lot. And I gotta talk about the uh, Impure Rage on this Paramus. It's amazing for a lineup of S2G because now it deals on max HP. So the more HP that you have, the more damage the LMU will deal. So going up against a drop with an Eden, with a with a Fredrin as well as an Xborn, his damage might even be higher than Wawa. Certainly, man. But you can already see that Tracy is being an absolute menace. Karo still hasn't hit level four. Oh my goodness. In the second minute of the game here is already first turtle done and I really wonder why he hasn't been able to hit level 4 yet. Kazoo is doing a big job. Tracy goes over to Jeet Do, gets cancelled down with the Onward there. Not able to get the way the Dragon fully on Karo. But Soxa wants to go in. How's the Fracture? Karo flickers out to safety. And KGG will be able to be comfortably in the lead in the first two minutes. Kazoo with a little bit of a steal there. You know what's uncomfortable here is that seeing a tank jungler getting bullied inside of his own jungle. We don't see this a lot and that's why we usually see the tank junglers being the prio, because you want to make sure that you have a good time farming up, and even if you lose farm, it's completely fine. Sigabum, as at this point, looks like he's having trouble, but LMU already using the ult. On the way, the dragon straight into the fracture. Soxa to be able to pick up one kill. Now, his pure destruction doesn't connect, but Kazoo's still gonna be caught now as the passive keeps on going. Fraser's Wrath connects into LMU, and Kazoo's able to get out. Now, Tracy going for the chase under the turret, looking for the last kill onto him, but it will just be Tracy traded in. A bit of overextension. It's just a roamer traded in for two members as some of these skirmishes in lane are actually looking all good for KBG. Yeah, looking very good in fact for KBG. Now in terms of goal difference, it's 11.6 for KBG, 9.7 for S2G Esports. Now the thing is, S2G, they still have a way to come back into this game. Let okay. Lunar have two items. He has War Axe, so looks like he's skipping the boots. After this, perhaps he's going for the Immortality. After the Immortality, he can start going for the more aggressive fights and then maybe they can do something about it because for now, SDG is losing all the lanes, but they're rushing the turtle. Don't try to get it now with the Fredrin. Tracy does the Jeet Do, gets out with the Shunfu as well. Now Karo has a time to wrap, but that's going to be penalty zone, locking him down with his way. The Dragon actually brings them back all the way to damage for the destruction as well, and that's going to be the steal for Soxa. The game going to be locked up, and now straight into the collapse of KBG. 7-1, that's a good Shadow Stampede to bring Kazoo out of the turret as KBG continue this straight into the mid lane, giving Wawa all of his hits as Tracy zones him in the back. I like the tempo that Keep Best Gaming is playing. They're, they're picking on the pace, making sure that they're moving around the map very, very fast, and slowing down S2G at the same time. I gotta say, this strategy is working very well because of Tracy. The fact that Tracy slows down the mid-tree of S2G, giving so much space for Saksa as well as NMU to move around, like, 
he might not be the overall MVP, but for setting all of this up, Tracy's the MVP, man. For sure, all the way from the start, setting up that steal on the green camp for Saxa, enabling him to be able to just farm and path up so well. With two levels up on the Fredrin, should just be down to one now as Katrice picks up the green camp again, and Sigibum is really struggling to get that snowball. LMU now as well having the glowing wand, so the healing coming in from S2G is not really going to be there. Tracy at this point, he can go for the kickoffs because Saksa has a lot of damage and Saksa now has the Sky Piercer. So if we think that the early game is good, it's going to be much better. Hunter Strike, Sky Piercer, that's a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. It does seem like now the Purple Wolf is going to be invaded. Karo already down to a third of his HP. Let's give it regen back to half. Let's see if we can continue this. Poking on to the Purple Buff. Goes for the steal, but Kazoo will be able to time that red tree a bit better than Soxa to recover. But it's still a 5,000 gold lead almost for KBG as they continue to scale up. And that's what's scary here. The Moscow, he can get to that late point very, very soon. Here's the thing. I kind of feel like S2G, they need to move as a team very, very fast. If they can get a kill onto Saksa, Saksa is 5-0-2, so he has the shutdown goal. If you're able to shut down Saksa, your entire team, this goal difference of 5,000 can be lowered to 2,000, or, you know, worst case scenario, 3,000. And at that point, it's there's still a big fighting chance. So for this turtle, I feel like for S2G, instead of focusing on the turtle, try to get Saksa. If you get the shutdown goal, it's big. Keep as giving can get the turtle, doesn't matter. Kill Saksa. That's that's objective number one. Okay, but in the bottom lane we can definitely see already. Wow, I dealing a whole lot of damage for Og Armor. Taken now, forcing the last insanity before the team even starts. And Tracy finds a way to drag and brings Begin back to the team. See you doing a good job in zoning them. KBG, good destruction up top. It hits. It hits, and he goes for it. Now with the Fear of Misery as well, forcing the Purify out of Siggy Bum. Won't be able to go for the turret. And Wawa continues this chase. Has Another Abyss Walker, but he decides not to overextend a free turtle over to KBG and Kazoo. He's going to be able to secure that now. Saksa puts on some damage. Karo, 12 in the mid lane, forced back, and that's going to be a free tier one to KBG. This is not good because S2G, the way that they draft, they have the X4 to go up against the Turizla. They got the Roger first pick. 100%, they wanted to win the lanes. The fact that they did not win the lanes is very tough. For them. Buff given big in, still able to steal it away, but look at the damage just from the ghost versus the fell. Oh, Karo, with the shatter now, gets knocked up. No. Oh, they even Kazoo gets canceled. Dash away from that onward, or rather from that Zuki go with the onward. And then LMU continues this with the stampede. That glowing wand, man. Let's talk a little bit about that, right? The new changes to the glowing wand, you kind of have that yeah. NOD effect as well. Now you've got the life bane so that the healing, the sustain coming in from S2G is going to get cut in half. The shields is going to get cut in half. And you still have the glowing wand passive where you're burning your opponents for their current HP. So even you're trying to recall, it's going to be very, very difficult. And now looking at the items here, three items for Saksa, a lot of on-hit damage. And looking at the Moscow, he's just a few hundred gold away from the Demon Hunter. So, and now he's completely completed his Demon Hunter sword. So in terms of power spike, Yikes. Keep Best Gaming has hit it. So now they can do whatever they want because they are at an end game point. Okay, Tracy walks up again, he's trying to zone them away. Lunar's doing a lot of damage. By the way, Wawa, the fact that he hasn't hit the DHS before, and it kind of looked like he did already. Oh yeah. Dealing so much damage. Lunar is so far behind. The XP lane down onward. Oh no, not able to connect there. Not able, even able to go for the Earth Shadow. Gets pinned down to the wall by the Spear of Misery. And LMU just bursts him down with a Ghost Burster. Say goodbye to the Faraga armor. Two Spear Destruction. Nothing wants to take it though. Just wants to go for the turret in the bottom lane. That's another tier two with Karo dead. Right as the Lord is going to spawn in the game. You know what's the difference maker here for Wawa Wa? Is that he has the Inspire, man. Usually in tournament play, we see the flickers, we see the purifiers. The Wawa Wa understands that he has to go big or he's gonna go home. So he goes for the Inspire. And I feel like the Inspire is the reason why he's been winning the lane. And in the team by even without the Demon Hunter sword, we see a lot of damage. And he's very generous at proccing the uh, the Inspire whenever a fight looks like it's gonna break out. He will use it just to zone people away. I think now, for Siggy Boom, the fact that you know, he's down. He only has a Wind Talker and a Sky Piercer. Not even the Endless Battle just yet. Meanwhile, the Scaling Hero, Wawa, on that Moscow. Hold up, LMU. Walks up the Stampede. Tracy's doing a good job. He's getting out of these taunts. Earthshatter DCC with the Shun Fu. And you know, we've had a talk off cam, off stream, about how good the Cho is. Yeah. As XP or as damage deal, as a damage dealer. But now as a roamer, it seems, is it Pryo? Lapel? I feel like it's only Pryo because 
Cho is one of those heroes you can make a mistake on. So if you're really, like, if you have 300 games on a Cho, yeah, Pryo. Definitely. Okay, so these turrets, that splash can be get... They're going to be able to get rid of it before the Lord even spawns in, by the way, or actually charges in. So KDG have a very, very good road. Wawa with the go for the Spear of Misery onto Sigit Boom, forcing him back once again. They're going to go for the Siege now. It's asking a good Earth Shatter and an armor combo. LMU forcing him into Netherrealm. But look at the base turret already taking very low in the back. Oh, it's a fracture for Saksa as the penalty zone locks them down. A Spear of Destruction now pinning them down into the wall. But it's going to be a good taunt there. And it will take Wawa down. Kazoo, that damage just chunking him down. But he's still able to survive. One tier one up top, taken down. They're going to go for mid lane as well, but now Sigit Boom wants to go for Chase, has a like and pounce, gets kicked back by Tracy. An amazing disengage as they pick a base turret off. Lord's Lord, Blast and Sanity in the 1v3 with the Brago armor. Tracy's still able to get Kundo out of it. That additional range. Dude, the extra 20% range. It helped out a lot. Trace was able to survive with the Jeet Kune Do, and I gotta say, for Keep Best Gaming, good news, bad news. Bad news, yes, Wah 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 got taken down. The good news is that he did not have any kills. So even though he was taken down, he didn't transfer any shutdown gold. So now we see the goal difference. There is not much goal difference that S2G was able to get back because now it's still around 8,000, 9,000 gold lead for Keep Best Gaming. So it's still them controlling the entire map. So if Wawawa had three kills, perhaps they would have swing for S2G. But the fact that he had zero kills, not much has changed. Interesting. Trying to walk up here, Kazoo. They're going to get down, swimming them and holding them off. But it's 10 to 3. A 9,000 gold lead in the first 11 minutes of the game as they just play it so disciplinedly at this point. They're just freezing oh. up the waves. Looking at the item, Saksa is already full bill. He even has a rose gold meter to make sure that he doesn't make a mistake. Perhaps he's going to sell it off for an immortality in case things go wrong. Looking at, it, uh, looking at the items for Roger, he has three items as well. He has the Sky Piercer. The only thing is that he does not have any stacks, and this is where we see the Sky Piercer's nerf actually being a big factor from 6% now to 4%. It's going to be more difficult for SPG to drop down Keep Best Gaming for the lethality to proc. So, yeah, Siggy Boom with zero kills is going to be rough. And they can't even walk up, not here. KBG pick up a free Enhanced Lord in the 12th minute of the game. Zero turtles, zero lords, zero turrets. No objectives whatsoever for STG. Let me just say, Mirko, your vlog asking every single caster what their opinion is, mm -hmm. it's gonna, it's gonna do well. I feel like it's gonna do well. It's gonna be very, it's, it's very It's gonna well. be very commentated. I, I think so, you know, like, especially now considering Siggy Boom in the 12th minute has finally gone the Milfic Roar. It looks tough for them to pull off this defense. They do have a Yeeve, by the way, so let's see how they go at it on the Siege. Tracy walking up again onto Kazoo, who's still able to go and disengage for a bit, but that's two tier threes taken out, two base turrets taken out, KPG. Gonna go again. Rage C, oh my god! That's the way the dragon bringing it back with the flicker. Spear destruction into the back line as well as he decides to go for it. No, just go straight for the base. And KBG win out game number one. KBG, man, coming up. Like I said, from the previous wildcard, they're like, you know what? We want to be number one in the group. This time, they're going to prove it. But we got to talk about S2G as well, where I kind of feel like Carl was not able to start things up. And I kind of feel like that's one of the big factors where they didn't shine. Because as an Edith, we will see like flicker earth shatters and, and everything. But none of that happened. Keep Best Gaming, they started the game well by the Cho slowing down the rotations coming in from S2G. And then having your side lanes win up their, their laning phase, the gold lane as well as the EXP, that just accelerates your lead. Tracy in this game is absolutely amazing. This is the kind of draft that we want to see for a best of one game where just use your best heroes and and then just show what you got. It's phenomenal, man. We were talking about how the improvements could be seen already all the way from the start. We didn't expect them to be able to dominate one of the Group A favorites, the Group A favorites, oh, S2G. Yeah. Most casters, analysts, and even the viewers back online have been talking about how S2G are just going to dominate this group. And hey, first game, and we already have a different result to that. Dude, let me just say, Homeboy is going to be number four in Group B. Yeah, you better, you better.